everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and my name is Omar. Thank you, Cassandra. And, and um, well, I'm very happy and very proud to be from the Galapagos Islands. Let me show you a very quick, I'm going to start with our presentation. And we're going to start right here. So welcome, everybody. As I said before, uh, my name is Omar, and I'm very proud to be from the islands and from Ecuador, actually. So uh, today I'm going to take you around the Galapagos Islands. I can tell you I have some experience. I've been uh, working as a naturalist guide for about <clears throat> 10 years already, and uh, with G Adventures about six years. So our tour today is going to be pretty much um, it's going to be around the southeastern part of the Galapagos on board of the Yolita. That's the boat I've, I've been working for quite a few times. But of course, we have some more uh, places to go. We have a lot of different uh, groups that we go as well and a lot of different tours. That's why um, I'm going to show you about what can we see in the western part, what can we see in the northern part as well. Let me wait, let me see a little bit until it, it opens. Just a minute, please. Internet is not the best right now. I think everybody can understand that as a lot of us are working from home and dealing with internet issues of our own, right? Okay, before it starts opening the uh, Google Earth, I'm gonna take you a uh, very quick, of course, we have a lot of questions to answer before um, we head up to our tour. And one of them is, of course, when to come to the Galapagos. So if you see right here, uh, here, is, um, here is a little bit of information about um, when is a good time to come to the Galapagos. So we have two kinds of seasons. We have the hot, and the, I call it hot and the warm because it's pretty, it's pretty much warm all the time. But of course there is a difference. And of course that is because the currents. So you can see right here um, from December to May, we have uh, the peak season can be March, which is, I can say the hottest with about 29 uh, degrees. That can be air temperature, water temperature can be a uh, March, the peak as well with about 25 degrees normally is uh, quite warm in that time. You can snorkel uh, without a wetsuit. Of course, the sun can be strong. That's why I always recommend to use a t-shirt or something in order not to get burned from the sun. And then we have a kind of low marine productivity, but that, that doesn't mean snorkeling is not good. Actually, one of the best snorkelings I have uh, was in, the lot, in, in this kind of a uh, hot season. So then you can see right here we have the dry season as well, and that is from June to November. The temperature is not that warm, um, so we can have kind of cool breeze. Uh, September, the coolest is about 23 degrees, and the water temperature can be about 21 degrees as well. Actually, when we head to the western part of the Galapagos, the temperature can drop to about 18 degrees, and that can be a little bit cold. So we have wetsuits available, for all of you um, on board of the boats when we go snorkeling as well. So then is when we have high marine, marine productivity, that means the cold current coming from the south that normally comes about uh, 300, four meters deep, uh, hits the shallows of the Galapagos. And then we have upwillings, good nutrients for a lot of our, al I mean, a lot of our algae. And then we can have marine iguanas, uh, we can have sea turtles eating as well. So here is a little bit of um, a comparison about how does it look like in March, like you can see it's very green and you can see how it's in September as well, which is uh, quite dry in the Galapagos. So now remember, same as everywhere around the world, temperature and weather has been a little bit different. That means about three years ago, we had about 14 months in some islands with no rain. That means even if you come in the raining season, there will be some islands that are uh, quite dry, quite dry. So let's check if we had already um, 
just a minute. We're going to start this program again. Earth. This is a little bit about um, temperature and uh, weather. So um, let me show you, and I'm going to take you now, I'm going to tell you about currents. Remember, when you visit the Galapagos normally at night, um, the um, naturalist guides or, and CEOs with G-Adventures will be telling you information. We have some lectures, and these ones are part of the lectures. We talk at night about currents, and we talk about geology, and that's a little bit what we will be uh, telling you today. So here. You can see we have currents. We have the warm current coming from the north, and we have current, uh, a current coming from the south, which is called the Humboldt, and we have the Cromwell current coming from the west. And that's pretty much the reason about we have the different kind of weathers right now, because um, from um, December to May, we have the, cold, the warm current coming uh, stronger from the northern part, and that's the Panama. Normally in that season, the water gets calmer, and then from May to December, uh, the current come from the south gets uh, stronger. That makes a little bit choppy the water. Um, but what is interesting is that if the current, more than the temperature and kind of weathers we have in the Galapagos, it gave us a lot of the animals we have right now. Because if you imagine here in Central America, if we had an iguana, for example, on a tree, and that tree after a storm fell in the water, that tree was floating. And after that, that tree came floating all the way to the Galapagos. And because those animals can survive for quite a long time with no water and with no food, they were able, of course, to survive all that long time all the way to the, to the islands. That's why we have mainly reptiles and we have mainly birds. Because, for example, for a mammals, it was very difficult to survive all of those 15 weeks, all of those uh, 12 weeks um, in, those, in those kind of trunks all the way to the islands. So what else is interesting is that we have birds flying to the Galapagos. They got lost, they arrived here, they were adapting, they were surviving, but a lot of our plants came by birds. That means in the islands, we don't have big trees with big seeds because that was very hard for birds to carry. That's why we mainly have small plants and of course, small seeds as well. So, let me show you uh, where to go. That is another question we have in the Galapagos, and that's why, um, um, so it's quite difficult sometimes to, to choose the best tour you will be thinking, where to go. Now, I can see these kind of tours, I can see the island hoppings, I can do a boat trip, but the question is, what is the difference in between uh, those kind of tours? So you can see right here, let me show you very quick, this is a very interesting tour. This is called a classic where you stay in hotels. And in order to go from an island to another island, you take on a speedboat. And of course, when you stay in the island, you can take daily tours. And of course, our CEOs will be taking you around at some different sites where you can find in those, in those islands. But the basic or the main idea in this, this kind of tours is that you stay in, sleep in a hotel. And of course, that is very good for us as a local because that helps a lot our local economy as well because you go for a dinner in one place you go for a beer for an ice cream and of course that is an amazing thing uh, for uh, locals we have about 30,000 people living in the Galapagos imagine that so of course in these kind of tours you can see a lot of things like the Darwin station you can see right here a very iconic place from the Galapagos you can go to Tortuga Bay or Turtle Bay which is a very beautiful place in Santa Cruz, Puerto Llora, you can see big marine iguanas. You can go and swim and snorkel in this kind of um, a natural a pool that you can see right there. It's a made naturally, that is a volcanic formation. And you can see right here, we have Floriana as well, uh, a beautiful place. There is only about 154 people living in that small town, but I hear last week was a newborn. So there will be one more right now, one, 150 something. So you can see there you can snorkel with sea turtles. It's a beautiful place to do uh, that. 
Here you can see there is Villa Millport on Isabella. There is about 3,000 people. And of course, from that port, you can do a lot of activities uh, like this kind of tour is called Tintoreras, the White Tiber Reef Shark Tour, where you can see those animals just very close uh, from the trail. You can hike to a volcano as well. That is a hike to the Sierra Negra volcano. Um, it's a little bit challenging, but of course we go slow in order that you can, you can uh, get all the way to the top. It's about five kilometers both ways. Look at the landscape you can see right there. That is an amazing experience. You can see that is our group having, a, having an amazing view uh, to the volcano. So you can take a tour to the tunnels where you can see blue footed boobies nesting and you can even snorkel through those channels you can see right there. It's an amazing experience. I've seen seahorses right there and lots of different kind of fish, uh, sharks and turtles and turtles like that. This is one photo from that, from that place. And you can see this kind of fish, of course, some examples of the snorkeling activity. So there is another tour. You do the same, basically, it's an island hopping. Uh, but in this case, what you do is to uh, practice some different sports on the, on the way. So you have a chance to go uh, biking and looking for the tortoises. You can uh, take kayaks and go along the shore trying to find penguins on Isabella and you can go snorkeling as well, like with sea, sea turtles. And of course, all of those tours are made um, and you can actually uh, do uh, by boat, but of course, from an island to another island. But let me show you, this is the kind of boats we have in order to take you around the Galapagos. And I'm very proud and I'm very happy and very blessed to say that is my boat. I, I, I applied for a project to G Adventures called Gibalius found and they uh, kindly helped me in order to, to, to buy that boat. They gave me a loan. So we are work, we have been working. It has started last year. And to this year, of course, is the conditions are a little bit difficult, but of course, next year's next year uh, my boat is gonna be working in this kind of island hoppings. It's called the G Values Fund, and I always invite to my other friends, the CEOs, to apply to this kind of project. So very, very, I'm very happy for it. So what else we have in the Galapagos are cruises. Cruises, um, of course, are very famous and that is a different kind. You can see, of course, a lot of different kind of animals, but you can do different, different islands. That's why I'm showing you what can you see in these kind of tours. This is, for example, a seven days on board of the uh, Montserrat, but actually that combines a little bit on la from land and a little bit from a boat. So it means if you are not, if you don't wanna be the whole trip in a boat, you want to have some, some time in town or something like that, of course, this is a great tour if you wanna do. Um, it's a kind of combination. So to get, to get kind of boat experiences. So here you can see uh, this tour take you along the Western part of the Galapagos, Isabella. Of course, if you're looking for an, a specific animal, like if you wanna see flightless cormorants, this is the kind of tours, of course, you have to take because the only place for those animals are on the Western part. This is, for example, the tour on board of the Reina Silvia Voyager that is gonna start working this year. So you can see this, this boat is, is quite amazing. Um, it's, gonna have, it's gonna have a lot of room, a lot of, uh, of course, only for 16 people, which is the normal size of group we manage. But of course, it's gonna have a lot of sizes, cabins are, are amazing in order to take you around the Galapagos. And here, for example, we have a 15 days on board of the Eden. So it means if you want to see everything like Genovesa, you want to see the red footed boobies, you want to go to Española to see the, the albatross, you want to go to the West, that would be a good chance, um, of course, in order to do a tour. So some boats that do the 15 boats, actually all the boats in the Galapagos do this kind of tours 15 days but the main reason is not to confuse you where to go. The main reason about having a lot of different options is because the national park wants to keep you away. So it means when you go to an island, you are not gonna be same like in other places with hundreds of people in the same place. You will be just one group, two groups, three groups, but then not a lot of people. So that is the main idea to give you a nice experience in the Galapagos. What can I see? What can we see in these kind of tours? 
If you go to the Western part, Fernandina, I told you, so we can have great opportunities. That is more about lava as well. You can see this kind of, we call pioneer plants, kind of the first plants growing in these kind of desertic places, kind of new islands. And here you can see this is another landscape. This is Tagus Cove on Isabella. You can see there is one of my groups having an amazing time right there. So you can see flyless cormorant, that's the animal I was telling you. You can see mainly on the western part of the Galapagos. You can see, of course, marine iguanas. Marine iguanas you see all around the Galapagos, but of course, they are different. They are different subspecies. You can see in Española, they are the, the reddish colors. You can see on the western part, they are the largest. If you go to Genovesa, they are the smallest. All depends on the food supply. All depends on the food supply, and of course, this is something our CEOs during the tour will be explaining when you are traveling around the Galapagos. This is, of course, a shy sea lion. That is not very photogenic, a little bit shy. And look, at this is one of my um, last, well, experiences um, talking about vol volcanoes. That is an eruption last year on board of the Yolit as well. That was an amazing, an amazing experience we had on board. And we have the Northern Island as well. Exactly what you can see in this map is what you can see in the website. If you go to the GeoVentures website, you will be able to see all of these islands. And in that way, you can be able to choose, of course, your tour. You can see Northern Island, Genovesa. This is that island. It's, it's an amazing, actually. Um, talking about birds is one of the best. If you are a photographer, you want to take photos of birds, that is an amazing place to go. You can see that is Princeville is a step. Step right there is where we do our dry landing, a little bit challenging, but of course we have always our crew member right there in order to give us a hand right there. We can see these kind of birds, the short ear owl that is normally an animal that eats uh, during the night, but in that specific island that uh, kind of owl had to change their behavior in order to eat during the day because the food supply of course is not, is not very much for them. You can see that one is praying. So we can see red-footed boobies. 90% of the red-footed boobies live on a Genovesa. We can find frigabers with a red pouch as well. So we can find Nazca boobies. Actually, I call this the breast day because you can see a lot of, a lot of boobies. That is one of my bad jokes I do when I'm in my tours. So you can see right here, um, we have these kind of landscapes as well. It has a beautiful beach. That is one of our groups heading back from our activities. And Central Islands, uh, this is, I'm showing you this because this is not part of our tour, but of course you will be thinking, what can we see here? What is Bartolome? Like, for example, this is one of my favorite places in order to see and take photos. And um, that is from the top of the, uh, from a volcano. It's a beautiful hike we do. That is our group taking a photo right there. So this is Saliban Bay. And um, as you can see here is our happy group as well having a nice time in that kind of walk. So, um, oh, there is one of my guests falling in a hole right there. You have to be very careful when you're walking in this area. So Ravida Island is a beautiful red sandy beach, a lot of iron after a very explosive eruption, plus the oxygen in the water made all of these, all of these uh, landscape right there. And finally, finally, we are ready to start our tour. Let me see, before we head, Ah, look at this, Google Earth. What's going on with you? Just give me a second. We're having just a small technical problem. Looks like it's getting ready. Until now we have something called, I call all the time, a mandatory nap after all of our activities. So it's a mandatory nap. If you have been with me, of course, traveling around the Galapagos, I'm pretty sure you know about it. Probably some, that is one of our, one of our best um, times during the day because you can, you can uh, recharge your batteries until we start, of course, heading again to our activity, next activity in the afternoon. So let's see. Looks like it's getting ready, amazing. And here we are, my friends. And this is our presentation. 
um, around the Galapagos. I'm very happy to use this program, well, because you can, you can find a lot of different uh, things that um, I haven't seen. Let me show you, before we get closer to the Galapagos, this is our planet, but this is how it looks like before. This is called the Pangaea. If you have been in my tours, I'm pretty sure you know about this because I always talk about geology. That is a very important part of our tour because in this way we can understand how was the Galapagos before and how was our planet before as well. Look at, that is the Pangaea, one mega continent. We got a continental drift. The question is, why do the tectonic plates move? That's why continents move apart. So you can see right here, we have a convection zone, a magma flowing in circles, then we have a magma chamber, and that becomes the spraying center. Galapagos moves about three, five centimeters every year. We are moving all the way to Peru and Chile. So please write down all the information I'm giving you because at the end of this, it's gonna be an, a final exam. So we are moving all the way to the southeastern direction, all the way to uh, Peru and Chile, and, and that means we're moving and at the same time we are sinking. Something else you can see right here is something called a hot spot, which is a mantle plume that raised all the way, of course, from the mantle. It is a random, um, a random located. It comes all the way and that's why we have the eruptions in the Galapagos as well. So if you, it means if you put this together, you can see right here, we have the volcano number one. So that is connecting to the, to the mantle. So then with the time, we have the eruptions, we have probably 20, 30 eruptions, then the island moves away. So then we have the formation of an island number two, then two moves away, formation of island number three, then three moves away. But you can see probably right here, um, if you see right here, so island number one that used to be so big, used to be enormous, used to be very high, is getting smaller. And with the time, this island, of course, is going to disappear. What I'm, what I'm, why I'm telling you and showing you this, because you can see right here, this is something I like from this program. We have a 3D, we have a 3D video. You can see here on Isabella and Fernandina, there is where the islands, the kind of new islands with all the eruptions, with, with all the volcanoes are located. And if you see in the southern part right here, there will be even about 1,000, 3,000 meters deep. But in between the islands, you can see it's only about 200, 300 meters deep. So comparing to the outside, 3,000, 2,000. So it means all of these mass that you can see right here, this land mass, of course, came through this magma chamber. And at the same time, I was telling you, the islands are moving away, right? The islands, the islands are moving away. So it means, um, let me show you here. It means Garden Bay, the island number one that I show you in the photo here, uh, Garden Bay, um, Espanol Island. That is the island that used to be on Isabella, got all the eruptions. And after that, um, with the time it moved with the tectonic plates all the way to the Espanol Island. Very quick about, about the Galapagos. And finally, we are going to start our tour. So in that tour, of course, is gonna start in Batra Island, right there is where I'm gonna be waiting for you. Um, I'm gonna be waiting for you with a crew member in order to help you with the luggage. But remember, there is always a Geoventures representative uh, giving you support in Quito before you come to the Galapagos. You have the transfers, you have a briefing before you come to the islands. Let me show you very quick. This is our boat that we are going to join uh, today. This is the Yolita boat. I've been in this boat for about two, three years probably right now. So, and I had an amazing time during these, during these uh, years. So you can see the inside of the boat is very comfy. Look at your cabins. If you're a couple, we can put the beds together, but during the tour, if you want, we separate the beds. Of course, you can we can always do that. That is not a problem for our crew member. Look at this is our area in order to have our cocktails, our, our beer, watch the sunset, get a coffee. So we have amazing meals in these. Uh, we have an amazing chef right there on board at a moment. And this is, look, this is one of my groups, one of my last groups having 
and a farewell drink with our crew member after having an amazing time in the Galapagos. So look at these ones are the boats we use in order to take you from the boat to the island. This is a, the kind of dinghies we call or pangas. And we have two kind of landings. We have the dry landing, which is sometimes very easy, sometimes it's a little bit challenging, but of course there is always crew member in order to help us in order to do that. That is a kind of wet landing. If you follow instructions, wet landing will be <clears throat> the water only up to your knees. But if you don't follow instructions, water can be right here up to your neck. So that's why it's always important to follow the instructions from your CEO and naturalist guide. So now my friends, we are ready and excited. Batra Island was a military base during the Second World War. In this area only rains about a week, maybe two per year. That's why you can see it's very dry. That's why it's very disappointed when um, our visitors get here. So I'm, I'm waiting here and I'm gonna take you by bus. It's just a five minutes bus ride in order to go to our pier. And then uh, we will be getting ready to use uh, life jackets in order to get on board of our um, small zodiacs. And now I'm taking you all the way to the Yolita. Here we are. So when you get on the, on the boat, I'm telling you always about, about um, I'm telling you always about questions uh, pretty much um, that you have about the activities. And of course, I will be telling you about safety on board. We have a boat rail and we have safety in the snorkeling as well, information. And we have, of course, our meal, our lunch ready. And after all of those um, informations, I give you as well information about the national park rules. So we have in the Galapagos a lot of, a lot of restrictions, a lot of rules. And of course, in Gia Ventures, we manage a welfare and animal policy as well, which is very important in order to conserve this amazing place. One of them, of course, is about keeping uh, two meters with the animals, don't throw garbage, don't bring any kind of food to the islands like cookies, because imagine you bring a cracker, pieces fall, then a bird will be eating that, and then we will be changing their entire uh, behavior. So that's why it's mandatory. So. Ladies and gentlemen, our first experience in the Galapagos is going to be uh, with some of our friends in the water. It can be sea lions, can be fish, can be uh, turtles and sharks sometimes. And after these, we start heading. Hold on here. We start heading to North Seymour. Who's ready to um, watch some blue-footed boobies? So this is an amazing experience because we can start seeing, we start with our first activity with some uh, of these animals. Of course, they are very, very interesting. Um, and of course, when they are doing the courtship, it's very nice because they start doing the kind of dance. That looks like a little bit funny. That's why um, Spanish um, uh, sailors call them bubbles. That's why booby bird after wrong spelling. Nothing has to be with a body part that everybody makes fun of it. You can see um, that is one of the males bringing on a stick, a gift for the female. So you can see one of them making a kind of dance. And you can see right here, that is a kind of a sky pointing and opening the wings. As soon as you see male and female doing that, of course, that means the female accepted because normally it can be one male, I'm sorry, one female and a lot of males around uh, trying to court that female but of course, what a female has to do is to get close in order to see which is the um, which is the most attractive male, and the males, of course, can show if they are attractive or not, or not by showing their feet. If their feet is bright, if their feet is is kind of nice color, then is when that male will be chosen. Of course, of course, when they eat more, their body will produce more collagen plus carotene they get from a fish they eat plus the radiation of the sun is what makes that coloration kind of bright. That means the females are looking for a strong male, right? So, but the thing is that after all that process, when the male is doing the courtship, the male brings a lot of gifts, bring rocks to the female, and after all that process, even feeding the chicks, and when the chicks are ready to go away to fledge, 
So then is when the male and the female separate. That means they are monogamous, but only for a season. So that means after that separation, the male has to do abstinence because he will have to go and eat more, eat again in order to, of course, get its feet bright because after all of that process, its feet get kind of pale, kind of dark, and that means he needs to go and recharge his batteries again. So, um, of course, uh, they are a little bit, a little bit um, uh, shy when you are getting close. That's why the two meters distance, you can see that is a female uh, nesting in the background, uh, taking care of the eggs, and that is a male coming to say, go away, because they uh, work very hard in order to protect the eggs. If they leave the eggs for about three hours, four hours in a sunny day, the eggs can, um, cannot make it. So that's why we are there in order to protect all of these kind of, um, kind of situations. So we can see right there, frigate birds with a red pouch as well. They use the red pouch in order to attract birds, I mean, to attract females. And actually this is what Charles Darwin called um, sexual selection, what the males do in order to attract the um, other gender. So here is, you can see another frigate bird with a smaller patch that is important as well. If they have a small, not nice. So you can see there is the Yolita boat in the background. They will be our crew member waiting for us in order to, of course, give us an amazing snack after we come back from our activities. You can see a land iguanas, you can see sea lions. Normally that activity takes us about two hours. It's a very short trail, but take it that long because we just sit down, watch the animals, and we are heading back to our boat by sunset. And Case, we are done with the first day. How was it? That was awesome. We actually got uh, one question from Nikki, and she was wondering, um, what's the longest amount of time you spend on the boat without stopping, typically? Without stopping in a boat? Mm -hmm. Me? Normally, um, we is for that was myself. Group. For the whole group. For the whole group. So, um, well, that question is a little bit interesting because in the mornings, we have activities in the morning and the afternoon. So that means normally what we do is in the morning, we do a, a walk. So then we go snorkeling. Then in the afternoon, if the, um, if the National Park allowed us, we can do another snorkeling and another uh, walk as well. And then, um, and that's for the day, pretty much. We finish activities around 5, 6 p.m. sometimes. Then we have briefings. Of course, at night, we cannot visit the National Park. It's only from, until, from 6 in the morning until 6 p.m. So, and then, of course, the amount of days uh, we spend in a boat, that depends on the tour you book. I hope that was the answer. Yeah, no, that was helpful. Oh, so it varies day by day, um, depending on what kind of activities you were getting into. Mm -hmm. Normally, I've seen in cruises that you spend, for example, one day going back to the place where you started. In big cruises, for example, it doesn't happen here. It, every day is we are on a go. So um, a morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon. And, and even our last day before we go to the airport, we have an activity in a lot of the boats. Oh, awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool, thank you, Omar. Very good, so now, so we had a nice, um, a nice dinner, we had a welcome drink with a crew member, they nicely dress up, you sometimes don't believe that is our crew that was uh, working for us during the day, but they nicely dress up, the captain comes and give us a nice toast, <clears throat> our welcome drink, and now we are ready to start an early activity. If you are a morning person, you will love this. So it's a little bit hard sometimes, but we have to be ready. At six, at six in the morning, you just grab your coffee, go for an amazing view, just get out of your cabin in order to see a kicker rock. This rock is just amazing. We do at seven in the morning is snorkeling, can be with hammerheads, can be with white tip root sharks, can be with black tip sharks. Galapagos sharks, different kind of rays, and uh, sea turtles, sea lions show up in sometimes in that area. Now, Finger Hill, after breakfast, we visit Finger Hill or Cerro Brujo, <clears throat> a part of being top five of the most beautiful beaches in the Galapagos. 
<clears throat> that was one of the places Charles Darwin spent his first nights in the Galapagos. That why, that's why, well, that place is very interesting for me. No wonder why Charles Darwin chose this beach because it's just amazing. I'm gonna show you some photos of it. And now we are heading after another mandatory nap because that activity takes us until 11.30. We go back on board to have lunch. So we are ready again to go to Sea Lion Island. Guess what can we see on Sea Lion Islands? I'm pretty sure you know. Sea lions, right? Sea lions, blue-footed boobies, frigate birds. Um, the trail is a little bit hard. That's why always we have options in case you don't want to do that walk on a rocky trail you can do a dinghy ride, take you along the shore, watching kind of the same animals we see during the time we're doing the snorkel, I mean, during the time we are doing the walk. And of course, the snorkeling is amazing in that area because it can be sea lions in the area as well. Let me show you, San Cristobal Island, Kikarog, an iconic um, a photo that we can get right there. Kikarog, what you can see right there, 130 meters high is only probably 30% or 40% what used to be a gigantic, a gigantic uh, hill that is made by ash volcano after an explosive eruption. That's why it's breaking in parts very often. It means when rain, when we have wind, it breaks down. That means that rock is going to disappear as well. So you have to hurry up in order to come and visit us as well. Look at this is a morning activity watching that rock as well. And then uh, remember we do a snorkeling and that snorkeling will be through these uh, two rocks that you can see right here. So, and now this is the beach in the morning, a uh, finger hill. You can see another photo of it. It's not that amazing. I love this place. And then we are heading to our next activity and that will be on Española Island. Española, so, Garden Bay, that is our morning activity. Remember, this is the itinerary of the Yolita. Depending on the boat you go, that will be Garden Bay in the afternoon or kick a rock later. It, it's really different because we don't want to meet up with a lot of people, right? So we have Garden Bay and right here we have a nice walk along the shore and we can go to Osborne Rock in order to do a snorkeling along, along the shore around here. A lot of the snorkelings are guided. That means <clears throat> I put my wetsuit on and I go with you in order to show you what can we see under the water. That's morning. And now we are heading to Suarez Point in the afternoon. So this is our walk that we are gonna do right there. It's about two kilometers, but that walk takes us about three hours in order to, of course, go slow and watch the animals and of course, enjoy the moment you are having in the Galapagos because this is a, a, an experience that you're having only once in a lifetime. That's why our job, of course, is to make it worth it, right? To make it worth it. Look at this is Española Island. That is the morning. There will be some more sea lions. Look at this. They will be sleeping. Uh, they are very active in the water but on land, they are not that active, as you can see. We have chances to take photos with them, relax, we have a couple hours in that beach. Go snorkeling if you want, snorkeling is amazing. And here we have our, our guests doing snorkeling with some sea lions. Then we're heading to the afternoon activity. This is the kind of landscape you can see. This is the blowhole as well. And listen, if you are looking for albatross. So make sure you, of course, go to Española because albatross are not in other places in the Galapagos as well. But if you want to see those animals, it's important to know that they are not in the Galapagos in January, March, and April. They are gone from the islands during that time. So albatross fly away uh, to the open water of Chile and Peru in order to uh, take their immatures, they leave them there, they teach them how to find a fish, and then they come back to the Galapagos, specifically to Española, in order to, of course, uh, start mating. They use Española for mating. You can see that is the kind of ritual they do, but that ritual is not only for mating, that is um, for communication as well. In that way, they exactly know 
um, how, who is who in the area because they are monogamous for their entire, entire life. That means in the way they do their clicking, they point to the sky, they point their feet. In the same time, they will be uh, knowing how many times do they have to do, and that's the way they can recognize who is who. So this is an amazing experience. That is the Galapagos hawk the most um, um um the bird that is the most predator in the galapagos as well that is in the top of the food chain that is the reddish marini one i was showing you the marini ones from the western part of the galapagos they are not that colorful and all depends about the currents currents bring different kind of nutrients and of course the algae will be different with more carotene and that's why you can see they get that coloration as well so nazca boobies you can see in that island as well, some blue-footed boobies, uh, some mockingbirds, very interesting day we're having on Española case. Cassandra. So I think the majority of our questions have been answered right now. I think everybody's enjoying, enjoying all the photos of the animals and um, wondering about the uh, snorkeling and everything like that. Perfect, no worries. We will be talking about snorkeling soon. So I'm very excited because we are almost to one of the most beautiful islands in the Galapagos, but we are not there yet. Santa Fe, Santa Fe. Uh, you see Santa Fe is a town in, I mean, is a city in Spain. A lot of the names in the Galapagos have to be with, with Spain and England mainly, because we had a lot of them coming uh, during uh, the 18th and 19th century. You can see this is Santa Fe Island. If I tell you in the tour endemic, that means it's unique to that place. That means that iguana is endemic to Santa Fe. You cannot see that animal around the Galapagos and even around the world, that is specific animal. Look at this. One of the things that I like of Santa Fe are the giant cactus forest. We go through there and there is always a question, why did they get that high? Of course, we have the answer for that. So, you can see iguanas um, don't have a lot of food in the island. Look at the island, it's so dry. There is not a lot of vegetation. The only way for them to survive will be cactus, but they are not that big. They are not that tall. That's why another animal that had to be in the island in order that the cactus grow that high, because if you have seen prickly pears before, I'm pretty sure you have seen that <clears throat> they don't go very high. They're just like a, like a, like a bush, but here, you can see they go high because these tortoises had to reach higher in order to grab the uh, cladorios are called or the pads. And that's why in order, in order that a cactus survive as well, they had to go even higher. That's why the animal, I mean, that's why these kind of plants had to go higher. Let me show you something else. So, well, on the way to, um, in, 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 on the way to our next destination, we have, of course, a chance you have to be ready in case we can find dolphins, in case we can find an orca, we can find a whale as well. That is one of the uh, chances we have in order to see them because remember, we sail mainly um, on, uh, at night. That means during the day, um, because we are doing a lot of activities, we're not cruising, but there will be some of our days that we will be cruising during the day and we have a good chance to find them. So, and our next destination is in Plaza's Island. Let me show you right here. So, here we are going, Plaza's Island. I love this island because the landscape, one, and second, because um, you can find in this place something called, um, something called um, a sea lion bachelor colony. So actually, sea lions live in harems, one male and a lot of females, sometimes 20, 30 females. Can you imagine hard job they have, that hard job they have? So that's why there will be single males that congregate in some areas and in places, actually you can, you can see that. It's a very interesting topic. So you can see places, that is the kind of landscape we have when we are in the dry season, in the rainy season can get a little bit more greenish. Uh, you can have a good chance to do bird watching from the cliffs, like tropic birds, pelicans, blue-footed boobies. And that is er the area where the sea lions are working out in order to get ready again to be an alpha male. You can see how do they work. 
the one in the back is having a nice resting time. And you can see the cactus again, I'm back with that topic. You can see in this island, no tortoises. That's why only iguanas, you see the iguana here? That's why the cactus didn't have to grow. This cactus didn't have to grow that high because the predator here is a small. But imagine we introduce tortoises here, then it's how the cactus will go even higher. This is the kind of differences of um, adaptation and natural selection we can see during our tours in the Galapagos. Of course, look at this is the cactus on Genovesa, very low. The spikes are soft, like, like hair. And of course, um, that is because no predators, no iguanas, no tortoises. So, and ladies and gentlemen, get ready and excited because we are heading to our beautiful island, the most beautiful island in the Galapagos, Santa Cruz. Why is the most beautiful island? Because there is my hometown. There is about uh, 20,000 people living um, at a moment. And our first activity will be Charles Darwin uh, Station. Let me show you about the Darwin Station. We have right there, look at that cute animal. So that's a face that only a mom would like. So look at this, uh, uh, this is a tortoise, land tortoise. We have a breeding center right there. And of course, when I take my guests right there, they always ask me, Omar, why do we have tortoises in captivity? Why not do we see them in the wild? Of course, my answer is because in the 18th, 19th century, we had a lot of whalers coming to the Galapagos and from over 250,000 tortoises we used to have before, over 200,000 were hunted. That means nowadays we don't have even more than 50,000. That's why our project plus, plus when we had whalers coming here, they left rats, they left ants, they left a lot of different animals that are a problem for these tortoises and that's why our job is. If we made a problem, we had to fix it. That's why we have the breeding center in that area. We take care of the eggs. So then we take care of the babies for about seven years. As you can see here, you can see the numbers on the tortoise shell and the numbers have a color. The color identify from which island the parents came from. And of course the number is in order to, every year we have something called a tortoise amazing race. So it takes a long time, but of course we are very patient for that. No, no, we don't do any race with them. Of course the numbers are in order to identify who is who as well. Because when they go back, they get a microchip into their leg with barcodes in order to control in the future who they are, right? Who they are. So uh, after our Darwin experience, Charles Darwin experience, and after telling you more about, about uh, who was Charles Darwin and about um, more projects in, of that area, uh, so then you have some free time in order to uh, go to our town. And if you want to do some shopping, to grab, to just sit down, get a coffee, uh, something, of course, you are free to do that. And of course, you cannot miss the fish market. That is very interesting place. There are our local selling our, our products. And right here, you can see Pepe the Sea Lion, a uh, garden, of course, the area, looking for some pelicans, don't get too close. And then we are heading to the highlands of Santa Cruz. Let me show you after an amazing walk uh, along the town where I live. <clears throat> we are ready to head to um, the highlands of Santa Cruz in order to see some uh, giant tortoises. So, and here in the giant tortoises area, we have about a couple hours in order to see them in the wild, to see how do they walk. I always answer questions about how do they get to the Galapagos? How do they get that big? This is something I will be telling you if you come and visit us again. So, and of course, here you can see the comparison of a dome shape living in a big island with a lot of food and a saddleback shape living in a dry island like Española. Actually, that guy you can see on my right is Super Diego. He went back to Española after making 800 babies. Can you imagine that? 800 babies. So, that, actually, that's, that's my hero. My hero tortoise. Super Diego, we call so um, this is the giant um, tortoise reserve. So, and now I'm gonna take you somewhere else. 
Oh, I forgot to show you. This is the highlands as well. Uh, there is some lagoons or lakes where they can cool down. And this is one of our, our groups having a nice time watching the tortoises. You can see how big they are. Uh, you can see them walking around, always keeping two meters distance, of course. This is our group, of course, in a lava tunnel as well. That is another experience we can have right there. And, oh, look at this. These ones are two guys getting in a tortoise shell. Actually, they got out of the shell that day. And we are heading now to um, Floriana Island. Right here we have Floriana, Cormoran Point. We're almost done, my friends. We are in Cormoran Point. We're doing a morning walk uh, along this area, along a lagoon, trying to find flamingos. And then we are heading after this Cormoran Point to a Corona del Diablo. That's Devil's Crown. That is an amazing place to snorkel. And after Devil's Crown, we are getting to Post Office Bay, another, an, another amazing activity we have. Look at this is Floriana Island. Flamingos we can see in this place. There are not that many in the Galapagos anyways, but we have a good chance to find them here. A stingray along the shore. So we can see this is a double scrum where we snorkel. We, are, we have always our dinghy following us. Remember, if you get cramps, if you get cold, if you get tired, you just hands up and they are there in order to help you. You can see some more sea turtles and some more sea lions. And post office, that is our activity in the afternoon. I didn't want to put that photo because it's always a secret uh, when we get there. But and that is our post office and that is a very traditional area where, I, where we take our guests because whalers use that place in order to send letters back to England, back to North America during the whaling season. They never knew when they're going back home. That's why the boats going back home, they used to take everything and leave it in a real post office. But the tradition is still working with us. Um, and that's how we do. So what we do is to leave some letters, some postcards in the, in, in the barrel, and we collect, we collect the previous postcards from, of course, previous passengers, and we check if we can take and hand deliver, or we can put a stamp on it and put it in a real, um, in a real post office. When, when you come to this place, of course, we spend 10, 15 minutes explaining everything, how it works. So, but that is a very interesting tradition we have in the Galapagos. That is started in 1793, here you can see the time, by Captain James, James Colnett. So that was our post office bay activity, and we're ready to head to the next island. Cassandra, do you have something for me? No, I think that was really good and informative of, uh, of everything with the snorkeling, because there was a couple of questions before, but you covered it. Amazing. And now we're going to Chinese hat. There is another Chinese hat in, in Australia, I know. But this is our version of Chinese hat in the Galapagos. Uh, if you get closer, so this is just an amazing what we do along the shore. Why do we call Chinese hat? Because, because it looks like a Chinese hat. So you can see the place where we do our wet landing. We need closed shoes in order to walk along this area. It's a rocky area, rocky trail. Look at the beautiful, beautiful landscape we can have right here. We talk about geology here and we talk about uh, there will be a chance to see some more sea lions. If you haven't seen enough sea lions yet, there is another chance to see them. That is the place where we can do, uh, I mean, where we where we'd land again. And of course, right there we do a snorkeling. We can have a chance to find penguins. We can do penguins with them as well. That is an amazing experience. And after this, we're heading, actually we are almost at the end of our um, tour. It's very sad when we are getting here because it's our last afternoon. So this is Dragon Hill. Why do we call Dragon Hill? hill? The, the hill doesn't look like as a dragon in this case, but we can have a chance to find the Galapagos dragons. Galapagos dragons. And you can see right here, they are landing one the same as the days before, but because that island is bigger, they have more food. They are, of course, 
bigger in size as well, bigger in size. That is a, one of my groups, you can see in the background, having an amazing, an amazing time with these animals. And ladies and gentlemen, we are heading to our last day. This is so sad. So, and here we are in Black Turtle Cove. And that activity is early in the morning before we go to the airport. And you can see what are the opportunities we can see right here. Look at this is one of my last activities. We were able to find some white tier reef sharks. Actually, that area I call the Shark Avenue. And there will be some turtles. And there can be some, uh, some rays showing up. There is my group on a dinghy. And this is how it looks like. It's a very quiet place. What we do is to paddle. We don't use a lot of our motor in order to make it a very quiet morning. You can see right there, there is Naldo, one of our crew members on board of the Yolita. And there is on board of the Eden taking you around, trying to find some blue-footed boobies as well, some pelicans, herons, a lot of chances to find different animals. In that area, it's called Total Cove because there will be turtles as well. And from December, January, February, March, you can see turtles mating. This is one female and the rest of are, are males. This is a, a crazy way. How do they do the mating process? And you can see here, there are a, a golden rays as well with that we have a chance to see right here. Um, so as well as um, um, this kind of a steam rays and, and a white spotted eagle rays as well. And my friends, after Black, Black Turtle Co, we go for breakfast on board, and then uh, we are heading to the place where we started. Is not this place familiar? So it's a bow try again. Here we go back, we take the bus, and then we will be heading to the airport in order to say goodbye. Here is where we always clear our tears because after eight days of an amazing time in the Galapagos, uh, of course, we became uh, good friends, we become good friends, and, and of course, um, after all of these amazing experiences in the Galapagos, it's always sad to say goodbye. So, Cassandra, all good around there? Uh, let's just end with one final question. Um, if you could recommend one time of year to go to the Galapagos, when would you suggest? Well, the boat are different. I, I really enjoy, the, depending on the season, I enjoy the activity. For example, in the, from, from December to May, I like the snorkeling because water is warm. I don't need a wetsuit. It's very nice, right? Um, but in on land, when we are walking, can be warmer. What do we do when the day is hot? So of course we give you time in order to photograph animals, everything. And then we, we go back on board and then we chat on board in the briefing about what we have seen. And if I didn't have time in the island to tell you about frigate birds, for example, I tell you on board. That is in the hot season or in the warm season. In the cool season eh, on land, it's easier for me because we can take it easier, it's not that hot. Um, but then in the, in the water, so then the water can drop to 20 degrees, uh, sometimes even 18 degrees. It can be a little bit cold. So, uh, so then instead of spending one hour in the snorkeling, we spend maybe 40 minutes. Some people spend only 10 minutes because it can be, can be quite cold. So um, that can be the two difference for me, for me, right? Mm. If I can recommend, it's very hard. I will say come to the warm season because there's snorkeling, because I, snor I love snorkeling. But it doesn't mean in the cold season snorkeling is bad or something. If you come with a good wetsuit, so um, it's not a problem. Now, talking about animals, animals, um, they are all the time here. So they don't migrate. So that's why you have a chance to find them in the Galapagos uh, pretty much the whole time, with exceptions, like the albatross. I told you, no January, no February, no March. So then you can snorkel with sea turtles, you can find flamingos, you can find cormorants, you can find penguins. So pretty much, again, the whole year round. My recommendation, come anytime. That would be my recommendation. I think that's a great recommendation. Um, and I think it's based all off of preference of 
when you're what you're trying to experience so that was a great answer um and i want to thank you so much omar for taking us through the galapagos island exclusively aboard the yolita you did an absolutely amazing job and i think people are really aching for travel right now um so this is keeping our travel dreams alive um and thank you everybody who is on the line and taking the time to connect with us and join g adventures for our series of live virtual um group tours um, whether you were reliving the experience or seeing it all for the first time, it was incredible either way. Um, and if you enjoyed your adventure with Omar, which I know all of you did, there were so many amazing comments in the chat box. You can show your appreciation by tipping him through PayPal. I'll share the link in the chat box and you'll receive an email following this tour. This money goes directly to Omar and this is helping support him until he's able to do, um, what he does best. And that's sharing our world in real life. Um, for now, keep an eye out for more live virtual tours hosted by more of our CEOs from all over the world. And until then, stay connected. Thank you, everybody. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Monica, for showing Elizabeth. Thank you. That was an amazing time. I can't see anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you all will receive an email after this. Um, if you have any questions or anything, you can feel free to reach out as well. And thank you so much for everybody for attending. Um, and we hope to see you on a tour when we're all able to travel again. Thank you, my friends. Have an amazing time and keep safe at home.